There was a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Kaplan. He was flying to Israel from Newark Airport a few years ago um, on a Thursday afternoon. So, of course, he had it planned. The flight would take off. The flight would land. He'd get to uh, land in Ben-Gurion Friday morning, and he'd be great. Man gets on the loudspeaker, the flight's delayed. Then the flight's delayed. Then the flight's delayed again. Finally, he says to himself, if the flight is delayed one more time, I'm really putting myself at risk of landing. You know, with the time difference, I'm going to land very close to Shabbat. It's not going to make sense. So they get it, sure enough, announced they delayed again, and we're going to land in Ben-Gurion an hour before Shabbat. He says, I don't know. As he's thinking, a woman comes over to him. She's a leader of a group of, what are they called? The, the groups of kids that goes, birthright. 75 birthright boys and girls who are generally not religious that are going to be going to Israel for a trip. She says, should I get on the plane? Rabbi, should I get on the plane or not? He says, you know what? This is too hard a decision for me to make. Let me call Rabbi Belsky. Rabbi Belsky was the leader of the OU. He's one of the greatest poor scheme of our time. He calls him up. The rabbi says, you should not fly. He tells the leader, 75 kids, we shouldn't fly. But the, they, they said, the airline said they may not reimburse us. He says, I'm just telling you, I don't think it's the right thing to fly. So all the kids are like not sure what to do. And they're like, they realize he's an important rabbi. They say, okay, listen, rabbi. We won't fly, but here's the problem. You can go back home. You live near Newark. We have nowhere to go. We all came here from all over the country. We have nowhere to go. They said, if you go home, we're getting on that plane. He says, you have a deal. You check into the hotel. I'll check into the hotel. We'll spend Shabbat together. He starts calling some of his students. They bring a Sefer Torah. They make sure they're going to have a minyan. They bring food to the hotel. And they're going to spend Shabbat together in the hotel. The rabbi gets up on Friday night and he says, Normally when Shabbat comes, the Shabbat queen doesn't know if she feels welcome in our homes. Tonight, she knows she's welcome. Tonight, when we gave up a flight and knowing we may not get another flight again and we make courses and we sacrifice for Shabbat, she knows she's welcome. Let me tell you some of the basic laws of Shabbat and how to keep it properly and let's make this Shabbat special and one that we'll never forget. All the kids were in. Night, he went from room to room checking that everyone was okay. Two o'clock in the morning, he was still up. He's going down the steps and he hears footsteps. He's nervous. Turns up, there's two girls coming down the steps. He says, what are you doing? They said, Rabbi, we're keeping Shabbat fully the Shabbat. We sacrificed so much for it, we're not going to let it go. And finally, Saturday night, sure enough, the airline said, we'll give you all flights. And they flew to Israel all together. Two years later, the rabbi was in Farakaway. And meets one of the boys on the trip. He says, are you the rabbi, the airport rabbi? He says, yeah. He says, what do you mean? Yeah, yes, I'm that rabbi from Newark. The kid says, I want you to know, there were 75 kids on that trip. 99% of us are Shomer Shabbat today because of that one Shabbat. That one Shabbat that you cared. That one Shabbat that we sacrificed. That one moment that we got to see ourselves in our highest way, that Shabbat never leaves your mind.